Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Hello. Yes, I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. Today, I'm excited to kick off a new segment of the podcast in which we interview recent graduates who have entered into the business world, either as an associate chiropractor, an independent contractor, or an entrepreneur who struck out on their own and opened their own practice. There's a lot we can learn from the mistakes they've made and the successes they've had along the way. And today, I'm excited to be joined by Dr. Kristen Phillips, a recent graduate from Cleveland University. So how, bring me up to date, what's going on since the last time we talked? Um, okay, so um, as of right now, I am looking to hopefully soon start my own practice. Um, I took an associateship uh, position right out right outside of school, and it was a great experience. Um, I love the doctor that I worked with. There was two doctors in the office, and... Um, both of them brought great things to the table. They gave me experience. Um, one of my big things was um, one of the reasons I chose an associateship at first was because, um, you know, I had my little saying, you don't know what you don't know. Right. There's, you know, there's all kinds of things that you know that you need to uh, learn more about and um, experience and um, all kinds of things that you know that you need to figure out for yourself. But then there's, you know, there's a whole bunch about business that you just don't know about. So there's all these unknowns. And, um, so that was really great to get started with, um, some experienced doctors. There was one in the office that had worked for 30 years. Um, and he's owned his own practice the whole time. So that was great to work alongside him. And then there was another, another doctor who, um, has been, uh, out of, I think out of school for five years now. So he's kind of, um, it was nice to ask him questions as far as being kind of a new doctor in the field. So I kind of got the best of both worlds and, uh, it was a great experience, but as of right now, I think I'm ready to, uh, my real passion is to open my own practice. And so, uh, we're just kind of scoping it out and trying to figure out what our next move is. So remind me again, when did you graduate? Was it uh, December. Yeah. So just recently, I've just been out, uh, not too long at all. Wow. So what was the major, and you don't have to get into too many details, but was it a financial reason that you decided you wanted to do something different? Um, it was. And, uh, if I could give any pieces of advice to uh, your listeners, I would say the number one thing is, uh, that you need to do is be realistic. Um, when you're thinking about where you want to go, you know, um, make a realistic budget, really pay attention in business class, take full advantage of that class. It may, uh, you know, it may end up being one of the most important classes you have while you're in school because it gives you the opportunity to, you know, ask questions, um, take notes, really figure out what you need and, um, where you're going to be when you graduate. So, uh, one of the mistakes I made was, um, I found a practice that I really loved. Um, they practice, uh, their techniques were about the same as mine. Um, like I said, it was kind of the best of both worlds. I had two doctors in the office that I really loved dearly. They, they were great, uh, mentors. However, I just, I wasn't being realistic budget wise, you know, um, it wasn't a salary. It was, you get a certain percentage of what you bring in and being in a, a big city that's, you know, anywhere really bringing in new patients. That's tough. And, um, your teachers, your professor, professors and mentors, they all tell you that, but you don't really realize, um, you know, you don't, you don't bring in a patient, you don't eat. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's that so, easy. You, know, you really need to figure that out. <laughs> so, uh, if you don't mind me asking, um, what worked for you the best, what got you results? Um, when finding patients, uh, it's, it's being out there. Um, I know, People probably don't want to hear it, but it's, it's old school. That's the way that works best for me is you go out, you get your face out there, you get your name out there, you meet people. Um, you tell them you're a new doctor in the area. Um, I, I went to a couple businesses that were new as well. And I kind of just introduced myself as a new doctor in the area and kind of welcomed them to the area as well. That was a good, a good startup. I got a patient, um, that way. And also, you know, just going, you know, going around, going door to door. There's nothing wrong with that going in. Uh, I joined a chamber of commerce 
and um, I went to events that they held. That was really great. Uh, that got a few patients right off the bat. Um, if you have the money and it's it's within your budget, a BNI, a Business Network International Group, those are great. Um, you have a whole bunch of professional uh, professionals that you're working with, and they um, part of their job is to uh, recruit for you as well, um, with the idea that you would do the same if if you came about with someone who needed what they have to offer. So, um, those ways were what worked best for me. You know, there's all kinds of different ways to do things, but, um, that's where I saw my results is just actually going out there and meeting people. So what are you doing next? You said you guys are talking about kind of what the next steps are. What are you seeing in your future? Um, yeah, I would say that would be, um, you know, number two or three on my list of important things to do is, um, right after you get married, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> Along with that too, um, is know where you want to go. You know, don't mess around your, you know, your last two trimesters of school. You ought, I know I just got out. And the only things you can really think about is, uh, getting your numbers in there, seeing your patients that you have. And, uh, for a few of you, um, depending on where you are in the program boards, you know, part four boards, it's big, but those are your golden uh, trimesters to really figure out where you want to go, what you can afford to do. And, um, I guess my main thing is I didn't really, um, you know, I thought I would just start out and get my foot in the door and then figure out where I wanted to go. Um, well, I, I think it's important to figure out when, where you want to go first and, and just start there. That's, you know, um, where your heart is, is where your passion is. And I think it's a lot easier to really have your head in the game when um, you are dedicated to your area and uh, what you're doing and where you're living. So, so are you think guys thinking of sticking around the Kansas City area, or are you looking beyond? Or do you um, know? we're looking beyond the Kansas City area. We're hoping to find. You know, we really don't even have a state uh, nailed down yet. We have a few that we're looking at. Um, so as far as starting my own business, kind of where I want to end up is in a smaller town. I, I find that easier with, um, you know, just with how concentrated it is with, with different chiropractors. Um, referral is a big, huge way to start your practice. You know, it's, it's very, very helpful. Once you get your name out there, uh, you meet people, you see a couple people and, uh, you get results. They, you know, they tell their friends and their friends tell their friends. That's a great way to do things. But when you're in a big city, you know, and you've got a chiropractor on every corner, um, it's highly unlikely that someone's going to travel, you know, 30 minutes to come and see you from the other side of town if there's, you know, a handful just in their neighborhood. So we're looking um, demographically smaller towns, um, you know, income not crazy high. We, we want just the average um, because that's, you know, that's who comes to see us in reality. So that's kind of what we're looking for right now. We're looking in a couple states that allow what I'm going to be doing, my DAPC work. So the, uh, internal medicine type thing. Mm-hmm. Are there any questions you have or anything I could help you with right now? Just what, um, what burning what, questions do you have? Oh man. And I'll do my best to find out. <laughs> if we had two days, Dr. Day, <laughs> I could just, uh, fire them at you right now. But, um, you know, those, those are going to come along with, uh, when we, when we settle down, you know, just kind of, you want to know what, what you should look for when you're trying to find a space, you know, should you rent or should you buy? If you're buying a practice, um, should you be buying the building or should you be renting it first off? Is it smart to maybe just try on your own or, or to buy a practice because it's guaranteed patients? I mean, there's just so many questions. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a couple of, of quick things while we're on that subject. So if you buy a practice, which I have uh, some great success stories, people I've known who, who have done that and done very well with it. But make sure that your style of practice is compatible. A recent case in point was a guy who um, bought a practice. It was a thriving practice, and uh, it was seeing about 40 people a day. And the guy who bought it thought, this is great. I can see that. Um, uh, and think, you know, he thought he could make a pretty good living with it, which he probably can. And then when he took over, he was just conducting business as usual and collecting copays. And the people said, wait, 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 copays. We've never paid a copay the entire time we've been here. And he didn't realize that the previous owner just didn't collect copays. And so oh, boy. he bought a clientele and paid close to a hundred thousand dollars for it. And 70% of that clientele left because they weren't going to pay those copays. So 
you know, you have to buyer beware. The old adage holds true. And you really have to make sure that before you put out that kind of cash and make that commitment that you know what you're getting. So that's just one of the red flags that are out there. And it's not saying that you can't buy a great practice. I, I know I'll, for every one bad story I've heard, I, I hear 10 good ones. Um, but that's one of the, the things I would make sure that you, you look at. Um, and then the second one, should you buy a place? It, if it's a, if it's the right place, uh, an, a person that I just recently talked to bought a practice in a small town from a doc who had passed away mm -hmm. and was able to buy the building and the clientele and all, and the, the records. You don't actually buy the clientele, but, right. um, all of the records, the patient base and, uh, the equipment inside and got a great deal and is pretty much walking into something that uh, is already built for her. And that's the second time I've heard of something like that happening. Um, but by the same token, a lot of us don't have the money, um, or the credit rating or whatever to go ahead and make a big purchase, um, to buy commercial real estate. So, uh, leases are certainly a way, a good way to go, at least when you're starting out and then, you know, s save your pennies and go forward from there. Right. Okay. So that's, that's some good advice. You know, that's a case in point right there. Uh, you don't know what you don't know. I would have never known to ask about, um, I mean, you ask about the financials, of course, right. Uh, when trying to buy a practice, but that's not something you think to ask, you know, how, how are your patients? What are they used to and how exactly do you do it? So, right. And I would ask, you know, can I shadow you for a time? Um, I would have separate conversations with maybe the front desk CA staff, the back office people too. Uh, you may not even have to ask the question, but if you observe them not collecting copays, you kind of know. And you may not realize that at the time, but um, a couple of more things. You might want to try shadowing people. One of, the, one of the things that has been great about the podcast is I've talked to a lot of people all over the country who are very successful. And a guy told me the other day to shadow at least 20 docs. Go see what they're yes. doing, how they're doing it. Take everything you can. What you don't like, you don't need to do. But you definitely want to shadow someone before you look into buying their practice. But um, but outside of that, take some time maybe before you go to your next phase and shadow some people and just learn what you can so that you know more of what you don't know now. Right. Absolutely. I would say that would be something that I wish I would have done more of. Um, you know, I found a couple docs that I knew practiced the way I want to practice and I shadowed them a few times and, um, I called it good, but, uh, I wish I would have, um, just for, um, pure experience. I mean, even if they don't practice, you know, they don't use your technique. It would be nice to just see how different offices are ran, how they're set up, um, office flow. It would have been, um, very beneficial and I can still do so. So I'm still, you know, I'll, I will continue to do so, but, as a student, I wish I would have spent more time doing that as well. Well, look, thanks for your time. I'm so glad that you took the time to do this. Can we check in with you in a few months and just maybe see where you're at after the wedding and all of that is <laughs> exciting? Everything's done? died down? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right. sure. All right, Kristen. Well, thanks again. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast. For links to what was discussed in today's episode, check out the show notes at CairoBusinessMojo.com. And be sure to jump on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review if you liked what you heard. We'll see you next time.